What's up all my movie watchers and gamers of YouTube, it's your boy the Hobby Collector aka the Multi-Talent King, here to give you guys an unboxing slash review of the LG OLED 55 inch TV with NVIDIA G-Sync Google Assistance and WebOS. You guys gonna have to excuse expressions from this video because I am hyped up. I've been waiting years and years to pick up this uh, particular TV. Been putting it off so many times, putting other things ahead of it whenever I did have the cash flow to get it. And I finally picked it up. And man, this is my dream TV. So this is one of those things where it's not just a regular purchase. It's one of those things where like, I, it's literally my dream TV. So I, I could have purchased plenty of TVs that was on sale that could have saved me a lot of money. I could have got for dirt cheap because of different sales they had going on. But I did not want to get a 4K TV knowing that there's something better, knowing at the back of my mind that I wish I got an OLED because the OLED probably would have did this better or did that better or just simply better overall. So let's go ahead and read the outside of the box and let you guys see what they're spitting game to us about. Self-lighting OLED. OLED's individually lit pixels achieve color, contrast, brightness, and blacks that no LCD TV can match. Okay. A9 Gen 3 processor. You don't have to do a thing to enjoy the best picture and sound. Our most advanced 4K processor does it for you with our AI Picture Pro AI Sound Pro and AI 4K upscaling. Image quality of upscaling content will vary based upon or based on the source resolution. So basically what they're saying is if you put a 720p image up on screen trying to up, upscale it to 4K compared to a 1080p image it may you know look slightly different. So that's what they're pretty much what they're saying in lame terms. That's crazy. The hell? Think Q AI. AI with a higher IQ. ThinQ is the brain power that works seamlessly with your favorite voice assistants, while new home dashboard gives you the panoramic view for monitoring and control. And I do like that little dashboard that they have up on there, especially coupled with the motion no control, you know. Um, so we're going to get to the controller, uh, the remote in a moment. Yeah. True cinema experience. See it, hear it, feel it, Dolby Vision IQ, and Dolby Atmos. Now empower a full sensory experience, while filmmaker mode translates a director's cinematic, cinematic vision to your TV. Even connect Bluetooth speakers for a wireless surround sound. Now that is good to know. So when I do get a uh, sound system or something like that, even when it comes to my um, JBL speaker, I can just connect that Bluetooth to the TV. That's, that's sexy. Like I never had a TV that's Bluetooth like that. Ultimate Entertainment. Cinema, sports, gaming, there's no stopping your entertainment options with the latest uh, streaming partners, including Disney Plus and Apple TV. Advanced gaming tech with G-Sync, VR, VRR, and live updates to your favorite sports teams. So yeah, man, this TV does a lot. It does, it does I mean, it does it all. So um, this, is, this is one of the flagship TVs to pick up at this point in time. Of course, there's more TVs coming around the corner, 2022, and just, you know, later on this year. But this is one of the flagships out there, one of the best of the best. And I went ahead, instead of, like I said, instead of wasting money, spending like 600, 700, even I found deals for 500 for a good TV. Samsung almost got me with some of their TVs. Instead of doing all that, and then still, I was going to still pick this up no matter what. It's a whole different experience. So... I like nah. Instead of wasting that time and money, I just go ahead and just keep that and just wait till I'm ready to pull the gun on what I really want. So I did get the 55 inch, which is big enough for me. It's gonna be inside my room. Um, so replacing my 46 inch um, Sony TV. Uh, I forget the model number off the top of my head, but I popped it up on screen. That TV is rare, so if you do look up that TV and try and find it, first of all, first and foremost. Good luck trying to find that TV because it's very hard to find. And then when you do find it, good luck with the price because it's not worth paying the price that it's worth because it's not even a 4K TV, but it is one of the best 3D TVs in the world. And it has been lasting me for over 10 years. So yeah, that's crazy. And then speaking of Sony TVs, just to touch on that real fast, I almost got the uh, the Sony 4K TV over this one, which would have saved me about 400 bucks. I did save about $110 off of my purchase for this TV because I do work at Walmart and I got it through Walmart online using my discount. While editing this video, I realized while looking at my, my receipt, I realized that I actually saved $149.70 with my discount. So not $110, $100 and pretty much $150. Bucks. Yeah, I was happy about that. And Amazon, I was gonna get it through Amazon, but Amazon, I got, I don't got no type of discount through Amazon, so that would have cost me a little bit more money. So, same price, it was exact same price on Amazon and on 
uh, walmart.com for the people that want to know but like i said i can save money going through walmart so boom now before we talk about the picture quality i want to talk about everything else first because it's like the picture quality is the elephant in the room it's like duh like what I'm, what I'm going to say bad about it. Like, there's nothing to say bad about it except for one of the things that people do say bad about it is that it crushes blacks uh, at times. And I noticed that a tiny bit, but not like dramatically. So NVIDIA G-Sync, that's good for us gamers out there. Uh, even when you want to connect your PC to this TV, if you want to, you know, it, it, it'll be able to stay in sync and stay empowered with your games and stuff like that. Um, just like a PC monitor could, you know, of course it wouldn't have the, you know, the no, super low milliseconds, but at the same time, I didn't notice no latency or what, or whatsoever, no lag whatsoever. So, so let's talk about the sound. The sound quality is amazing. Um, it, re it reminds me of my Sony TV. I'm going to be referencing my Sony TV a lot because that is the TV I had for a long time and I've been using all this time and that I'm upgrading from. So I waited a long time to upgrade to a new TV. So I deserve this bad boy. It's been years. So the sound, like they said on the box, um, you can you can uh, once you set up the TV, it takes you all to, through all the different settings and stuff like that. And you can turn on the AI sound, and it does boost the bass and everything. So I kept that on. It does make a big you know difference. But if you are inside an environment where you want to keep it kind of quiet a little bit, then you don't want to have that turned on because even at like a volume at eight, you know it's kind of loud. But for a TV, it does have some amazing bass. That's the one of the main things that really threw me. The surround sound effect of it, it does a pretty good job as well. So, yes, I. Now, as far as the weight of the TV, I wasn't expecting it to be so so heavy, but this bad boy is heavy, like heavy as hell, like ridiculously heavy for what it is, you know, especially how thin it is at the top and it gets thicker at the bottom, but still, without the stand, the TV is heavy. And then even with the, with the of course, with the stand on it, it's going to be even more heavier. Believe it or not, I myself picked it up and bring it into my room, you know, from the living room. So, um, yeah, good luck with that if you're trying to do the same thing. You know, it's kind of hard to really grab it from anywhere. I kind of use the indention in the back to, you know, use that as leverage to grab it right there. And then, you know, use my other hand on the other side. It's really a two-person job, to be honest with you, is what I'm trying to say. The remote. Talk about the remote. Now, a lot of people that's used to LG TVs I've been watching reviews on, they need, to, they need to stop doing this. All you guys out there that's used to LG TVs, that's like your fifth or sixth LG TV that's doing reviews out here on YouTube, that's keep on talking about the remote and how you don't like it, how you wish they would change it by now. It's the same old, same old. Look at the remote I've been using for, for years. Like, it's better than Sony's remote, literally a long rectangle. That's all it is, you know, so... The step up from that to this, and then Sony is still using that for their newer TV. It's, a, it's the same remote for their 4K TV. So LG actually has a very, very good remote. It's just that you guys are used to being spoiled with that remote. You know what I'm saying? If I were to say remote one more damn time. But, um, yeah, man, uh, it's, it feels good in my hands. The indention in the back feels good. I was used to a square. That's all I had in my hand. But with the LG, with the LG remote, it's like it actually feels good. It's sleek. Um, it's small, um, it's straight to the point. Um, it just feels good. It, it couples with my hands real well. You know, um, it's a big old difference. And then the uh, motion control, people were saying they wish they got rid of that by now. That's getting tiresome. You got to understand, you can't say that inside your damn review because that's your own personal thought. You got to understand there's brand new people buying this TV. So for you to say the remote is bad, you're you're not speaking truthfully because you're speaking based upon your tiresome of the same thing over and over versus somebody that never had it before you know so from somebody like me that never had their remote before it's actually a very very good intuitive remote and setup to where you can move around the screen very well and easily i see nothing wrong with it you know i'm not tired of it yet because i never had it you know it's amazing compared to what i was used to um, reflections um, at the curtains down but you still can see through it all the windows are behind the TV there's no windows in front of the TV so just to give you guys an idea of where the TV was set up for these different b-roll shots and stuff like that and um, yeah as you can see you see some reflections a little bit you even see me inside the reflection that's the only downside about this TV if you're gonna have inside a bright living room you're not gonna be able to enjoy this TV the way it should be enjoyed you're not gonna be able to appreciate the picture quality the way you should you know and man Picture quality. Bro, I got a whole playlist that I saved months ahead of time called 4K, 4K 
um, adventure. And man, it's just, it just leaves you speechless. You think that you're going to be like, oh my God, wow, oh wow. Like, you don't, you don't say nothing when you're watching it. You just sit there. It's like, it's the same thing you, with 3D. Like, when you're watching something that's super good with 3D, you know, you just, you just, in a daze, you know what I'm saying? You just, it just sucks you in. So, um, it's crazy. The viewing angles is amazing. Um, you can look at it from any angle, you know, and you can still see the full colors, the full image, the full brightness, everything. Nothing gets distorted when you stand off to the side at all, not even a tiny bit, not even a fraction. You know, bezels are super, super thin. Barely even notice that they're there, you know, for the most part. Connection to your different devices, you do want to use a 2.1 um, certified HDMI cable. I did bring out three HDMI cables to test with this TV. First cable being a Sony T uh, Sony cable, which was the most expensive one out of all of them, which I brought a while, a long time ago, which was supposed to be a super, super good HDMI cable, which is pretty decent, but it doesn't work with my Sony consoles for some reason, which is kind of weird. It didn't work with the PlayStation 3, and it don't work with the PlayStation 4. I mean, PlayStation 5. I think it worked with the PlayStation 4, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think I tested with the PS4, but my PS5, it don't work with that, and the PS3, it don't work with that. How the hell is that a Sony cable but it don't work with their Sony consoles? But it works flawlessly with my Xbox One X and my PC. Like, no issues whatsoever. So that didn't work. Another cable I had purchased, which came inside like a bundle, like a two-pack bundle, and um, I was trying to find a packaging for it to make sure that it was uh, certified for a uh, 2.1, but I was pretty sure it was because I remember correctly when I first purchased it, I'm, I kept in my mind that I'm going to use these cables, use these particular cables once I get my 4K TV. So um, it's the braided black cables, real thick, and that ended up working for my PS5. I didn't even test out the M cable that I've been using all this time until like a day later, the next day I ended up testing it out with my M cable and man, a big difference. Well, you can still tell the difference from a regular HDMI cable and that damn M cable. I don't know what trying to kind of trickery they do with that M cable, but you can literally see a difference. So with that being said, all my gamers and movie watchers of YouTube and everybody in between, thank you guys for watching this unboxing slash review. Leave a thumbs up down below if this helped you out a little bit. And if, if this motivated you to, you know, get you a TV or if you're picking yours up right now and it's on the way to your house right now at this very moment and you're excited right now and you're watching this video because it's getting you pumped up, then give me a like down below. And I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover. I am going to do a separate video showing you guys my settings. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, there is something that no other reviewer mentioned about this TV as far as how to control it and stuff like that. And that is the button, the only one button that's on this TV. So if you lose your remote, I'm gonna show you guys how to control your TV without the remote. And no other person on YouTube has this inside their video. So I deserve to have a, at least a thumbs up for this. You know, at the very center where the light shines at on the LG TV, there's a button right there. Once you press that, a little menu pops up. The button does not move from side to side. It just presses in and out. So you press it again to scroll through the menu and then you press and hold to select what you want to select. And that's how you turn the TV off if you can't find your remote or something like that. And I'm pretty sure no one mentioned this guy. I watched a lot of videos of this TV. Trust me, this is like my dream TV. You know what I'm saying? And I watched plenty of videos and no one have mentioned that. So another fact about this TV, it does 120 hertz. Uh, 120 frames per second. Borderlands 3 is one of those games that does at 1080p, 120 frames per second, or 4K at 60. So I'm about to be on that because, man, I forgot uh, Borderlands was real optimized pretty well for 4K. Um, I forgot all about that. So I cannot wait to see how that looks. I haven't even tested that out yet. So 4K at 60 frames per second? Come on. That's like one of the first games that can actually do it very well without using a dynamic 4K. They actually literally 4K straight up. 4K, 60 frames per second, no dynamic 4K, no trickery, just straight up 4K. And it does so well at kicking that game's ass that it can do 120 hertz, 120 frames per second in 1080p. That's ridiculous. I got to see that too. I definitely got to see that with the sparks and stuff flying and man, come on, man. So this is like a gamer's wet dream right here and like... I wish this on everybody out there. If you want this TV, I wish this on you. You know what I'm saying? I wish everyone have a TV, an OLED TV, whether it's by LG, whether it's by Sony. Sony does a good job with theirs too, but it's hard to be LG. You know what I'm saying? There's something about them. 
So like I said before, as far as the settings, I'm gonna talk about that inside a different video. I'm gonna touch on it real briefly inside this video. Um, pretty much when you first start this TV out, you wanna choose game mode, of course. Um, that's what I got mine set to. Um, all the auto advanced contrast and stuff like that, you wanna have all that stuff off. You know, you don't wanna have that, all that little advanced contrast and live color. You wanna have always have that stuff off if you wanna have the best looking natural, you know, crispy looking picture without all that oversaturation and you know sometimes it looks real good if you want to have like that super colorful bright like just you know what i'm saying but if you want it to look like real like like it's you're looking at real life type of look then you want to have the right settings like the warm you want to have the temperature set to warm too the warm too is a little bit too warm for me unless i'm watching a movie but i got my set to warm one it's about what's look good to you and as far as what you're watching and playing i'm be playing a lot of games and stuff and um as far as my uh Regular settings like sharpness and all that stuff. I do got to set my sharpness set at two. The factory settings that is at ten. Uh, people in their video say you should, she should set it to zero because that's how like that's give you the most natural looking. Like I said, like if you want to see something that looks like real life, like it's like they're right there in front of your face, then you want to have it set to zero natural uh, sharpening. And I think my color is set to fifty five. Um, I, I kind of set it up a little bit higher to fifty eight or fifty six or something like that. Um, my brightness, I left that alone. Normally on all my TVs I ever had, I always cut the brightness down negative five to 45, but this TV, the blacks is already inky and gets super black as it is, so I just left it at where it's at. Contrast, most people send out their video, you should set, you should set that to 100. I got mine set to 98. Um, just to step it down a couple of notches, I felt like that was kind of like a nice little spot right there because 100 kind of felt like it was kind of punching too much in the whites and stuff like that. So I kind of, you know, stepped it down two little notches. And other than that, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out because it's kind of getting long. I don't know, don't know how I'm going to chop it down. But thank you guys for watching. I'm a long time and new time subscribers. And I'm out. Peace.